the posterior wall of the axilla is formed by the scapula, subscapularis, teres major, and latissimus dorsi muscle. Teres major and latissimus dorsi, they form the posterior axillary fold. The flesh of latissimus dorsi has been removed from this prosection and what remains is the ribbon-like tendon of the muscle. In the posterior wall of the axilla, there are three intermuscular spaces, a quadrangular space, and two triangular spaces. One is medial to the quadrangular space, and the other is inferior to the quadrangular space. The quadrangular space lies between subscapularis and teres major. Medially is the long head of triceps, attached to the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula, and laterally is the humerus, the region of the surgical neck of the humerus. I would like to attract your attention that the continuation of the long head of triceps has been cut from this prosection, so I will sketch it back. The triangular space medial to the quadrangular space is bounded by teres major, teres minor, and long head of triceps. Teres minor is not shown here because it has been covered by subscapularis muscle, but it will be very clear when we look at it from behind. The other triangular space is inferior to the quadrangular space. It is inferior to teres major muscle, and the remaining two boundaries are the humerus, shaft of the humerus, and the long head of triceps. Now viewed from behind, the quadrangular space is bounded by teres minor muscle instead of subscapularis because teres minor arises from the posterior aspect of the lateral border of the scapula and passes to the posterior facet on the greater tubercle of the humerus, while subscapularis is located anteriorly and inserts into the lesser tubercle, which can only be seen anteriorly. The other three boundaries of the quadrangular space are the same, teres major, long head of triceps, and the humerus. The two triangular spaces have the same boundaries, whether seen from anteriorly or posteriorly. And we can see here clearly that the medial triangular space is bounded by teres minor muscle. Subscapularis is a little bulky, and it can be seen here as well overlapped by teres minor, but the boundary of the triangle is teres minor and not subscapularis. Going back to the anterior view, I will superimpose the posterior cord of the brachial plexus on the muscles. The posterior cord of the brachial plexus has five branches. The axillary and radial nerves are its two terminal branches. The other three branches are the upper and lower subscapular nerves, and in between is the thoracodorsal nerve or nerve to latissimus dorsi. The upper subscapular nerve supplies subscapularis muscle, and the lower subscapular nerve supplies subscapularis and teres major muscle. Thoracodorsal nerve, which arises between the two subscapular nerves, supplies latissimus dorsi as its name indicates, and it continues to reach the fleshy part of the muscle, which has been removed here. As I mentioned earlier, that the only part of latissimus dorsi that is shown here is the ribbon-like tendon as it spirals in front of teres major to be inserted into the floor of the intertubercular groove of the humerus. While, as you can see here, teres major is attached to the medial lip of the intertubercular groove. The lateral lip receives pectoralis major. The axillary and radial nerves are the two largest branches of the posterior cord and they are the two terminal branches. The axillary nerve is probably inappropriately named since it supplies nothing in the axilla. The first thing it does is to quit the axilla by passing backwards through the posterior wall of the axilla through the quadrangular space. At this location, it's accompanied by the posterior circumflex humeral vessels. The axillary nerve passes just below the capsule of the shoulder joint to which it sends an articular branch, and then it winds around the surgical neck of the humerus, sometimes it's called the circumflex nerve. As it winds around the surgical neck of the humerus, it lies deep to 
deltoid muscle which it supplies it also sends a branch to teres minor muscle finally it sends a cutaneous branch the upper lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm which supplies the skin over the inferior part of deltoid muscle remember that the skin over the upper part of deltoid is supplied by the supraclavicular nerves branches of the cervical plexus and not the brachial plexus having such relations the axillary nerve is liable to injury in fractures of the surgical neck of the humerus and in dislocation of the shoulder joint the radial nerve the second large branch and terminal branch the radial nerve provides the major nerve supply of the extensor muscles of the upper limb whether in the arm or in the forearm and as you can see it here it lies over the glistening tendon of latissimus dorsi it leaves the axilla posteriorly through the lower triangular space and while still in the axilla it supplies branches to the long and medial head of triceps as well as a cutaneous branch the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm now i will superimpose the axillary artery the posterior cord of the brachial plexus is called posterior because it lies posterior to the second part of the axillary artery the axillary artery begins at the outer border of the first rib as the continuation of the subclavian artery and ends by becoming the brachial artery at the lower border of teres major muscle for descriptive purposes it's divided into three parts by pectoralis minor muscle this is a reconstruction of pectoralis minor which is located in the anterior axillary wall it's a triangular muscle that's attached to the coracoid process of the scapula the second part of the axillary artery lies behind the muscle and the third part of the axillary artery which lies lateral to pectoralis minor has three branches these are the subscapular anterior and posterior circumflex humeral arteries the subscapular artery descends along the lateral border of the scapula and sends a circumflex branch that passes through the medial triangular space the circumflex scapular artery passes around the lateral border of the scapula to supply the muscles on the dorsal aspect of the scapula and participate in the formation of the scapular anastomosis the posterior circumflex humeral artery is larger than the anterior it accompanies the axillary nerve through the quadrangular space passing around the surgical neck of the humerus the brachial artery is the continuation of the axillary artery at the lower border of teres major muscle it gives the profunda brachii artery or the deep brachial artery that supplies the extensor compartment of the arm in doing so the profunda brachii artery passes posteriorly through the lower triangular space accompanying the radial nerve thus the quadrangular space transmits the axillary nerve and the posterior circumflex humeral vessels the triangular space medial to the quadrangular space transmits the circumflex scapular artery the other triangular space is inferior to teres major and transmits the radial nerve and profunda brachii vessels returning back to the posterior view i will sketch the nerves the axillary nerve passing around the surgical neck of the humerus as it arises from the quadrangular space the radial nerve spirals around the radial groove or the spiral groove of the humerus the quadrangular space also transmits the posterior circumflex humeral artery and the inferior triangular space also transmits the profunda brachii artery here you can see the radial nerve and profunda brachii vessels lying in the spiral groove between the medial and lateral heads of triceps the medial triangular space transmits the circumflex scapular artery i'm drawing it dotted here because it lies deep to the muscle and in fact uh, the circumflex scapular artery it grooves the lateral border of the scapula in its way to the infraspinous fossa to participate in the anastomosis around the scapula